Hey booktube, it's Charlie from Reader Turned Writer, and today I wanted to share the idea of context. So this will probably be just a really short video. I just have been thinking about this lately, and I was talking with my husband recently about this, so I just thought I would share some of my thoughts. I first heard about the idea of context when I was reading this book, The Read Aloud Handbook by uh, Jim Trelease, and this is a book about how important it is to read aloud to your kids. And it's brilliant, by the way. If you have kids, you should definitely read it. Context is just basically the more you know, the easier it is to read about it. And the more you read, the more context you'll have. So in the book, he actually calls it background knowledge sometimes, and he I'm just going to read two paragraphs that he shares as kind of an example of context. The first one. But Sabathia, who pitched three days earlier in Game 3, gave up a lead, a lead off broken bat double to Austin Jack Jackson. He struck out the next two batters, then walked Miguel Cabrera intentionally with the first base open. And then the second one. Callison Rhodes put on 84, but with the ball turning, Mark Waugh could not hit with impunity, and his eight covers cost only 37. The run still had to be scored at more than 7 and over, with McGrath still to return, and Warren having two overs left, with Rhodes pulled Ruffle to the Bevan at Deep Square Lake. And so the, the idea is just that, even though I am not like a huge baseball person, the first one was obviously easier for me to understand what was going on, because I have the background knowledge or the context of knowing some things about baseball. I know. I know what a pitch is. I know what it means to strike out. I know what first base is. You know, I know what batters are. And so even though I don't really know very much about baseball, I can still follow along in the paragraph fairly easily. And the second one, I have no idea what a ball turning is, but I don't know what eight overs is or how it's scored or anything like that. I have no idea what a deep square leg is. And so trying to follow it, I'm like, I really don't know what that paragraph is talking about at all. Jim Trulli says, The less you know about a subject or the vocabulary associ associated with that subject, the slower you must read, the more difficult comprehension becomes, and the less you understand. I love this idea. Not only does it really encourage me as a mother to read aloud to my kids, because even though my kids are four and two, and so they're not at the age where they're actually starting to learn to read quite yet, the more I read to them, the more context and background knowledge I am giving them before they're even starting to read. So then when they do go to learn to read and they have to learn each of the, all of the words and everything, they learn to sound them out and cite words and all of those things. As they learn to do that, reading will be easier for them because as they read, they will be able to comprehend more because they know. They've heard those words before, they understand those words, they know what they mean. I also love it just aside from from trying to teach our kids to read, I love it for me because it it kind of gives me more of an open mindset, a, a growth mindset where I can say, you know, just because I don't like a certain book the first time I try to read it or just because I can't understand a certain book doesn't mean that I don't like that book. It might just mean that I don't have the right context or background knowledge yet to really enjoy that book. This, this could be applied to so many things. For example, classics. There are a lot of people in the world who think that they don't enjoy classics, that they can't read classics, that they're not smart enough to read classics, that classics are too hard for them. But really, they just don't have the background knowledge. They don't, ha they don't understand the language very well. They don't understand the, what's going on in the book because it was written in a different time period or a different culture. If they really want to read classics, and there's nothing wrong with saying, well, I don't really want to worry about those classics right now, that's, that's fine. But if they really wanted to read classics and enjoy them, it would be possible they would just need to get the background knowledge and the context and be patient with themselves as they did that. This is true with historical fiction as well. I used to think that I didn't like World War II that I wasn't interested in it, that it was boring, I've never been interested in it. Then I read the Children of the Promise series by Dean Hughes, and I absolutely loved that series. And it kind of gave me a boost up because it was written about an LDS family and an LDS missionary, and I'm LDS, and so I had a lot of context already just from that, that I was able to get into the book and follow the characters and be really invested in it, so that as it introduced the things about World War II that I didn't know and that I thought were boring, I was able to understand them and be more patient through those parts and really learn a lot about World War II and really enjoy them, and now 
I want to read more about World War II because of those books. It can be really helpful also for someone who is trying to go from middle grade to YA or YA to adult because they need to understand that that they need to be patient with themselves as they're trying to make that transition and that finding books that are more similar to what they've been reading already, finding recommendations and things, but one of the best ways I think is just finding different authors that write in different age groups. Like uh, Brandon Sanderson, for example, has a book that is more aimed at YA, but then he also has a lot of adult fiction. And so if you already are familiar with his writing and his type of world building, then making that transition will be a little bit easier. Or just sticking with the genre, let's say you really like fantasy, YA fantasy, but you're, you are worried about going into adult fiction. Well, if you pick some adult fiction that is fantasy similar to what you're already reading, but just a little bit stepped into adult fiction, then it will be easier because you have more context and more background knowledge. It can also be really useful if you want to expand the types of books you want to read and you want to start reading genres that you don't typically read. Just understanding this concept, I think, is a very useful thing. I just think it's really important to remember the more you read, the more context you have. The more context you have, the easier it is to read other books. And I think that that is just a really brilliant thing because it it really goes along with the idea that we should always be learning and growing as people and one of the ways that we do that is through reading and I love that idea. Thanks for watching my kind of rambly video. I will see you in the next one.